How are you? Good. Thanks for coming today. I really appreciate it. So I've been teaching here about two years now, and this has really changed my life. I, I don't feel like I have a job. I have a passion, and this is the best thing I've ever done. I love it. I love it. So George Lucas once said, the technology keeps moving forward, which makes it easier for the artists to tell their stories and paint the pictures they want. And I believe it. It's so much easier now to create online content. It used to be really complicated. Software is really easy to use, and I don't have any experience in this area at all. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I do to get my courses online. Okay. So what we're gonna talk about today are five different things. We'll talk about the audio setup, how to set up filming or the video. Then we'll move on to screencasting, which means recording your screen. And then we'll talk about how to do video editing. And then we'll have questions, but please interrupt me throughout this if you have questions. I want this to be interactive. And if I don't answer all of your questions uh, here, then during happy hour, or we can have coffee later, and I'm happy to walk through my humble thoughts on how to do all this. And so here's my first, um, my first home studio. And I set this up uh, about two years ago. And I had to set it up like this because I have high ceilings in one of the rooms of my house. And so my kids actually helped me to set this up. We had a lot of fun. My, my youngest kid, uh, Dylan, calls it a tent. And I kept it up there. And I actually went to Home Depot and to Lowe's. And they gave me the equipment, a couple poles, as well as uh, some of the blankets and then lights. And I set it up because what happens is if you have a room with a tall ceiling, you hear a lot of echoes. Now, the, the acoustics are quite good in this room, uh, but I had to actually put these things up on the sides, and that's my studio. And I'll give you a sample of the audio in a second. Now, in terms of my background, uh, I'm from Canada originally. Uh, any Canadians here? No Canadians, okay, I'm by myself, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. You'll hear me say out and about every now and then, you'll know I'm Canadian, right? So I'm from Canada, uh, grew up in Canada, then moved to the States uh, in the late 90s. I uh, went to business school on the East Coast, uh, worked uh, in, the, uh, in the finance industry on Wall Street and came out here to, to manage a venture capital firm. And I have three boys at home, and the extent of my AV experience is I would just record my kids. I would take pictures of them or videos of them, that's it. I know how to use my iPhone, and that's all. And what I'm going to show you today is not much more complicated than that when you set up your own studio at home. Now, I worked in venture capital during the day here while I worked or while I taught at universities during the evenings. And I loved teaching at universities. It was a lot of fun. And so in terms of my Udemy story, uh, one of my students asked me, one of my students in the universities, asked me if I had time to meet for a mentoring meeting. Of course, I said yes. And so I met her here, she worked at Udemy. And I didn't know much about the company then. And initially, I looked at the company like a venture capitalist would. I thought, my gosh, what a great platform. This is kind of like what Google is to search, Udemy is to ed tech, and everybody else is Bing, right? And I got really excited about it. And I talked to my partners at my firm about investing, and I said, screw it, I don't want to invest anymore. I want to teach, and, I, and I've never been happier. So I absolutely love what I'm doing. Again, I've been teaching for about two years here, uh, and it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the equipment right now. And I wanna stress that everything I brought today is in these two boxes. Okay, so these are the lights, and I'll talk about lights shortly. I'm gonna put it back here because we're gonna use this as a light stand uh, in a second. Okay, and everything else is in here. So the first thing I wanna talk about is, is the microphone, the audio. And I've tried just about every microphone there is. And there are different microphones for different occasions. If you've been interviewed on television or at your company, you might have used a, a clip-on mic, which is, a, they call it a lavalier. And I've tried that. I've also tried the shotgun mics. I've tried a bunch of them. And I found this one is the easiest one to use. And it's called a, a Blue Yeti. And I'll show you what it looks like. And I'm gonna, again, set up all of my stuff from scratch here. Let me just use this as a table. All right. So it actually looks, like one of those microphones you see on Larry King Live. It comes with a cool stand as well. Here's the stand, we're not gonna use it though. And I've also got cables here, so let's, let's set this up together. We'll do audio and then we'll do video in a second. And so all you do 
is you plug this into your camera and into your laptop as well. And the laptop will power it on. And again, I've used many different microphones and I brought samples of all of them if you want to discuss them during the Q&A session or later on tonight. So let me go and get my microphone stand here and I'll screw it in. One second here. All right, I think we're good to go. Okay. Then I'm gonna power it up by plugging this into my, my Mac. And I use Windows as well sometimes, but I find Mac is so much easier for me. Okay. So I'll plug this in. And then, give me a second here. I'm gonna plug this directly into my Mac. And if you have any questions as we go through this, uh, please let me know. Okay, one second. Power it on. And then this one here is gonna go into my camera, which I'll set up in a second. Okay, so I'll just plug this dude into the bottom part here. And there's one more thing we need on top of the microfo uh, microphone. Uh, exactly, exactly. So this thing, anybody know what this is called? It's called a pop. I didn't know what this was until recently, but when you see musicians on television singing into these things, what they're doing is they're blo blocking the sound from their mouth when they use P and B sounds, or P and B. I guess that's why they call it a pop. Right, so I'll, I'll put this on here as well, and we'll come back to this in a second when we actually do uh, our, uh, our recording. Okay. All right, we are done with the sound for now. Great, moving on. Now we're gonna talk about the tripod. And I recommend a brand called Manfrotto. And all the equipment I'm using right now is available uh, on this, uh, this one pager here that you all have in front of you. If you don't have it, please let me know and I'll get you a copy. And I recommend using what you already have at first and then purchasing maybe some of the products you see there. And I'm happy to talk to you offline uh, about uh, how to set this stuff up. So let me open this up. This is a, a German company called uh, Manfrotto. You'll remember it's Frodo from Lord of the Rings. All right, and you wanna make sure that this thing is at eye level. And the reason I say that is you wanna give your student a great experience to the extent that they feel that you're, just, you're talking one-on-one -on -one with them. Okay, great, so I'll set this up. And if you have a very big camera, I recommend getting something that's more sturdy, like that camera that DQ is using over there. See there, it's bigger and he's got a more robust stance. So let me set this up here. All right, lock it in. I think we're good to go. Whoops, forgot these guys here. All right, great, we're done with the sand. Eye level, good, good to go. All right, next up we've got the camera. Now there's many types of cameras that you can use. Some people use an iPhone or an Android handset or a video camera or a GoPro. I use a DSLR, which looks like this. And I bought it years ago so I could take pictures of my, my three boys, Andrew, Matthew, and Dylan. And I didn't realize that you can, actually, um, you can actually take videos on these things too. In fact, any camera that's been created in the past five or 10 years that's got a lens like this allows you to record video and HD video, most of them too. So let me just set this up here uh, on the stand and we'll worry about focusing in a little while. Okay, there we go, great. And let me just hook up the blue Yeti to it as well. And all these cameras have a port on the side as well for a microphone. They're usually hidden under these little uh, rubber things here. M-I-C, that's mic, right? Okay, good. Great. Okay. So we've got the camera hooked up. We've got the stand. We've got the audio. Let's talk about lights now. So when you set up lights, the reason is so that you can get rid of shadows. And I recommend having three lights with all the same color bulb. Okay, if you get a different color bulb, it actually distorts the quality uh, of, of the picture. And so you can purchase the lights from Home Depot. It's kind of like floodlights, like you have outside at the front of your house. And the lights that I use are actually, I order them from Amazon. It's called Westcott Basics. It's about $200. And you get these two lights with initial bulbs, as well as the stands. It's a great deal, it's good. So I'm gonna put this here, and in a minute we're gonna set up the lighting. 
Okay, so this is light on one side. All right. Okay, I'll turn this guy on here. All right, got the other side here. And then we're gonna get a backlight in a second as well. Let me just put this guy here. And it'll take me a second to get the lighting perfect. Okay, so I'll turn it on here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a backlight in a second. So if I could please ask that somebody turn the lights out here so I can try to set this up perfectly. Okay, all the way off, thanks. Okay, cool, that's fine. And so when I stand here, and this is probably where I'm gonna stand when I'm recording myself, I wanna make sure that there's no shadows behind me. And I apologize if you can't all see me. But I'm gonna turn around and I see that there's a shadow. So I need to get rid uh, of that shadow, okay? So what I can do is a couple things. The first thing I can do is you can purchase really cheap filter paper online. And this will take the shadows with the harsh edges and soften it up a bit. So instead of seeing a, a harsh edge like that, if you put this on, my kids call this thunder paper. Okay. That will soften it up a bit. And I'll put this on the other side. Any questions? Uh, so that's what my kids call it. I think it's, a, DQ, what's it called? Filter paper or something? Diffuser, okay. That's what, yeah. All right. All right, and this will soften the shadow. I knew nothing about this stuff when I first started. Okay, look at this, eh? I stand here, and you can barely see that shadow, but you can see it a little bit still, so let me just move these back a bit. Okay, and if we could turn the lights all the way off, um, that'd be great, thanks. Put this one over here. I think that's gonna work a bit better. Probably position myself here. Okay, it's good, it's not perfect. I got a little bit of light in the back, so I gotta get rid of that light. So I've got a really, really expensive lamp that I wanna show you. This one here, you've all got it at home. This was in our attic, and I, I took off the lampshade in the top, put in one of the bulbs, and I'm gonna use this for the backlight to get rid of the shadows, and, and also to give it kind of a nice pop. I make it look, the video look a little bit more 3D-like. I think that's good. I'm actually gonna move the camera over here. Okay. All right. I think we're good to go. That looks good, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Ah, clicker. Okay, cool. So we got rid of all of these shadows. Now comes the, uh, the demo part, okay? I'm gonna try and set up audio from scratch here and we'll create a, a video together and then we'll edit it together and then we'll upload it to Udemy. Okay, let's try. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do uh, a screencast, which means taking a recording of the screen. And you can do that on a Mac if you open up QuickTime, which is free, it comes with all Macs. You just go to File, New Screen Recording. If you have Windows, use PowerPoint. And in PowerPoint on Windows, you can go File, Insert, Screencast Video. You can't do it on a Mac version of, of uh, PowerPoint, only on Windows. And that's what I use on my Windows device. So let's do a screencast um, recording. Okay, so let me just do tab here. I'm gonna go over to QuickTime. And I'm gonna go new screen recording. And you see how it's picking up that sound here? See that? Okay, great. So let's see here if it's attached to the right one. Yes, it's got the blue Yeti. So I'm gonna click record and it's gonna record what's on the screen now. Okay, hold on one second and then we'll go back to QuickTime and then we can always um, stop recording when we're done. Okay, good. So what I'll do now is I'll go back here and I'm gonna do a screencast demo. So there's a course I'm currently working on now that will be ready uh, in about, um, about two or three weeks. It's called the Complete Personal Finance Course. And I'm gonna show you a screencast lecture that I'm gonna create right now. And I'm gonna show you a number of steps. And I'm gonna show you lots. This will all make sense to you in a minute or so. Okay, let's get started. Got this inserted and the video is recording. So I'm gonna talk about what's on the screen right now. 
In terms of example number one, if you take a look at the top here, the first question we discuss, the time value of money. And in the first white box there, you can see that if a couple decides not to spend $2 a day each on a cup of coffee, over a period of 45 years, they will save over a million dollars. And you can change around those white boxes if you want to and enter in your own parameters. Okay, and then I stop right there and I will stop our screencast. Okay, let's go here and go file. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. All right. Sorry, I can't seem to find the, um, usually there's a stop button here, but the screen resolution changed. So do you guys mind if I change the resolution here? System preferences. Okay, that's my son cheering me on there. <laughs> Display. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll make it a lot bigger so I can actually see a bit better. Hold on a second. There we go. You see the stop thing up there? See it? I'm clicking stop. Okay, good. So we just recorded that video. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that video that we just did. Save. Right here. And I'm going to call it screencast. Done. Great. So that is saved. Okay. And then what we're going to do is next we're going to do um, a, a, a video uh, of, of me talking. And this should be the fun part. Okay. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my camera and we're going to focus. And because I don't have anybody here to help me focus, I'm going to do it myself. Now with, it, with a camera, a click camera, when you take a picture, it automatically focuses. But when you use a video camera, it does not automatically focus. So you actually have to focus yourself. And I'll show you how I do it. I got a little hack here. All right, so I'm going to increase this to this level here. And then I'm going to pull this back here to where I'm going to focus. Okay, great. That's where I'm going to stand is right there. Okay. This will make sense to you in a second. I'm going to turn the TV on so you can see what I am doing on the camera at the same time. Let me just power on the television. Great. And I will plug this into the HDMI port of my camera. One second, please. Okay. Take the lens cap off. Okay, I'm gonna put this dude over here a bit more. And I am going to focus in, give me a second. Okay, good. It's, it's all right, huh? Hold on. Is that looking focused to you guys? Okay, good, cool. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over just a touch here because I want to be speaking on the left side so I can put kind of like a, a newscaster screen of the screencast in the corner. Bear with me one second, please. Okay, good. Great. Now we're going to record. So I'm hitting the record button. You see the red light there? Okay, great. So we're recording. So now I know exactly where to stand. Okay. I am going to lower this down because I don't want this to be in the, uh, the video when I'm taking the recording. Okay. And so that should be right below. Can you see this or not? You can see it a bit? Okay, good. All right. Sorry. All right. Thanks. Am I off to the side a bit? Okay, good. Thanks. So I'm going to introduce my course now. Here we go. And before I make the introduction, I always make sure to remind myself what the name of this file is. Otherwise, you have so many video files that you don't know where to keep track of them, etc. And so, uh, here's the title. The Complete Personal Finance Course, Take One, Section One, Lecture One, Introduction Video. Welcome to the Complete Personal Finance Course. This course is three courses in one. And by the end of this course, you will learn how to save more money, protect more money, and make more money. So let's jump right in and look at our first exercise here. That's it. Okay. Is that all right? Thanks. Thank you. Great. We're done with this. So I'm going to move these lights over. If you guys want to turn the lights back on, we can do that. Okay. And I'll move this so you guys can see me. Whee. Do you guys like my backlight there? It's pretty badass, huh? 
Oh, sure, absolutely. So this backdrop, it's just special paper. DQ, what do you call this paper? Uh, this is a Savage backdrop. This is like the company that makes these. Okay, cool. Savage. At home, <laughs> at, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll, I'll show you what I do at my house because I have a pretty simplistic setup. I'm going to go back here to the beginning. Whoops. Okay, my first home studio. So inside my studio, which you can't see right now, I actually have here a white blanket. Okay, and I use the green for a green screen. My kids wanted to be in a Star Wars video I made, so we did that, which was fun. And for the promo for some of my courses as well, I have a green screen set up. And so it's pretty small. It's actually only from here, this box here, to here. And it's just a white sheet. And I use these clips here to tighten it on the poles so you can't see the background. In order to get rid of the wrinkles, what I do is I have a steamer. I just steam down. Yeah, yeah. This looks a lot better, though, to be honest. All right, cool. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take out memory card and transfer the video here directly into our editing software. And so this is a, a compact flash disk. You can use Secure Digital as well. A lot of people use that smaller rectangular card. Both are good. This is a bit cheaper and a bit faster as well. So I like to use it. So I'm going to go back to where we were. Cool. And now I'm going to put this in here in this memory card reader. You can get online anywhere. And then I'm going to import this directly uh, into, um, into iMovie. You see iMovie down there, that little star? That ships with a Mac for free. If you want and you're using Windows, you can use Adobe products, like Adobe Premiere. I prefer this one because it's really easy. So my kids use this as well. I'm going to double click, make a new movie. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to import some stuff. So the first one is that video there. Okay. Import. Okay. So you can see that. See that little circle there? Can you see that? It's importing the video. Okay. So this is import. I'm going to drag this down here. And we're going to add that screencast picture in picture in a second. And then what I'm going to do is on top of that video, I'm going to put this screencast for the picture in picture. Okay. So we can render the video and then upload it as well. Okay. And it's a picture in picture. Oh, a picture in picture is you ever watch uh, TV and you have the, the, the game in the corner? You got two TV screens at once, right? And I'll, I'll show you what it looks like PIP, picture in picture. So, what you do is I select the item here and I go up here and I say, give me a picture in picture. And if I want, I can say, give me a green screen as well, which is how we make, I make home videos with my kids, uh, put them in movies. So picture in picture. So it makes it a lot smaller. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this up here and change the size around a little bit so I can superimpose it and, and put it in, in the corner. <laughs> okay. We'll go here, make it a touch smaller. Okay. And I think I'd probably ideally make it uh, a little bit bigger than that in my, my final production. I'm going to give it a nice shadow look to it as well. Um, I also want to throw in a title at the beginning of this video here. There we go. Good. And we can call this whatever we want. So I'll call it AV demo. Okay, good. And then between here and here, I want to have a transition kind of like you see in PowerPoint. So I'm going to choose this. See, it looks like that. Welcome to the complete personal finance course. This course is three courses in one. And by the end of this course, you will learn how to save more money, protect more money and make more money. So let's jump right in and look at our first exercise here. In terms of example number one, if you take a look at the top here, the first you guys get the idea, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, thanks. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this file. And it's kind of like saving a file. I go save. And you see here, this is the naming convention I like to use. I like to use acronyms at the beginning. And then the section number, lecture number, and the name of the video. So in this case, it's the complete personal finance course, section one, lecture one, introduction. And 
you could save it as 1080p, which basically means high definition, like the, your, your, your big TV at home, or you can save it in lower definition. I recommend using 1080p, and then you upload it directly to Udemy. And I'll show you in a second how we can upload that. So let me just click Next, and then I'm gonna save it. And then if you, you see that little circle up there, right there is showing you the progress of the file that you're actually saving. And then what we're gonna do is we can go directly into Safari and, and upload that video. And so Udemy makes it really easy for you to upload videos. What you do is you click on your course and when you take courses on Udemy, if you click on my course, this is where they're all listed. If you click on instructor, which will appear when you start teaching courses, you create your course here and it's really, really intuitive and easy to do. You go to curriculum, then you select the video file here that you want to upload to. We're now uploading a file. And once it gets uploaded, Udemy converts it so that students can view it on all types of screens. Now, if you want, you see here how it says fresh test video service? You can click on that and upload a video sample that you've created yourself and ask Udemy, does the audio and video work well here? and they will help you perfect your video and your audio. And I had to do this a couple times. They were really patient with me, they were great. And then once I actually got it uh, perfect, then I never had to go back through that process again. But you can upload it directly to Udemy and they'll give you feedback as well before you start recording your, uh, your first course. Okay, so let's go back here and see where we are here. So editing is very easy to do. And again, if you have a Mac, you already have iMovie. And I recommend using iMovie. It's, it's easier to use than I demonstrated there. <laughs> Thank you for your patience though. Okay, um, and we did the demo. And this is again what it looks like when you upload directly uh, to Udemy. You just select the video and it automatically gets uploaded. Now the files have to be at least 720p, which means lower resolution. We already did 1080p though with ours, which means HD. Okay, great. Now let me talk a little bit about best practices. Um, I humbly recommend um, re-recording instead of over-editing. What I mean by that is if you record a video of yourself and it's not perfect, keep recording it over and over again until it is perfect instead of using iMovie to edit out certain words and that sort of thing. I got carried away. I made a lot of mistakes early on. Next up, I recommend purchasing the equipment from Amazon or from this great company, b and uh, which is a, a camera store in New York City and they keep Amazon honest with respect to pricing, right? They're very competitive with each other. Uh, and then just teach what you love and, and teach from your heart, knowing that you're, you're helping to change people's lives. And, and if it ever feels like work, then just walk away and come back to it the next day, right? And just, just teach what you enjoy. Uh, we all have skills to teach each other. Teach what you love. It, it'll show when you're teaching, okay? And if you wanna get additional support, uh, you can join a, a Facebook group called Studio U. And there's about 50,000 members there. And it's not just Udemy employees that give you feedback, but it's teachers. You know, I'm, I'm active on it sometimes. I like to give people advice. And we're all in this together. So there's a great sense of community from the teachers. I'm not talking about Udemy itself, but just the teachers. We like to help each other. So please join that group as we're all in this together. And I just want to finish up by... Um, by, by thanking you all for your time. And I want to thank uh, Laura, Lauren, and DQ for the help setting up this presentation. Uh, please contact me anytime if you have any questions or if you want to grab a coffee. Again, we're all in this together. Um, I'm dedicating the rest of my life to this and I, and I love what I do. And there's my, my email and my phone number there. And so um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know now or we can even discuss questions you have during happy hour today or coffee later on. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, sir. So what, you, uh, what uh, setting do you set the Blue Yeti on? So the Blue Yeti, it all depends on the room you're in. And there's something you can change called the gain and volume. Okay. And so in this case, I put the volume at 30% and I put the gain at 30% as well. Mm -hmm. And you have to play around with it a little bit until you get it. You want to pass it on? Yeah, I've got one. So oh, you got one. Okay, cool. The, the input, you, they've got like, you know, stereo and... Oh, yeah. yeah what, do you, what do you find about I do stereo. Stereo? Yeah. And, and sometimes, so it just does left and right. Yeah. 
And so sometimes you'll, you'll hear me coming out of the left speaker or the right speaker as I move around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yes. Did you ever use teleprompter when you first started? Not when I first started, but I do now. Okay. Yeah. So and everything. Yeah, so here's how I do it. Uh, I kind of refine my own process, we're all different. Um, I go on, this is out there, I go on really long walks, like a 12 hour walk. And I'll use Microsoft Word on my iPhone. And I'll, I'll use Siri to record myself and I'll just throw in content on what I think I wanna teach in a certain course, right? And then I'll do that for a couple days in a row and I'll do some research as well. And then within Microsoft Word, I sometimes have a 100 to 200 page document. For this course I'm doing now, the Complete Personal Finance course, I've got about 300 pages. And it's, it's kind of a data dump of, of unstructured logic. And then what I do is I categorize it into different sections. And I used to have five or six big sections in a course and then subsections, which are lessons. And I tag it using the headers, heading one, two, three within Microsoft Word, insert a table of content. And that's how I do it. Then what I do after I perfect everything is I copy that content into PowerPoint. And I put, I reverse the PowerPoint slides so that the, the writing is reversed. And then I use uh, a, a, um, a, a prompter that actually looks like, a, I don't think we have one here, but it's about this big. It's a piece of glass. And you'll see presidents and prime ministers usually look at two different ones. This one is right on the camera, so you can't tell that we're looking somewhere else. And then I have another device I hooked up to my laptop, which costs about 100 bucks, really cheap on eBay. And that just mirrors it, the image directly into the camera. And I'd be more than happy to talk to you offline. If anybody wants me to send you pictures on that or a demo of that, send me an email I'll send over right away. But that's how I set it up, yeah. One more question. Sure, yeah. For DSLRs, recording time is very short. Okay. Like it's like sometimes 12 minutes, it shuts, shuts up yeah. down. Like yeah. What do you do? Like sure. how do you deal with the battery part? Sure. So the battery is okay actually. I find that my battery lasts about three hours. I always have two batteries ready. I have one ready just in case today. And what happens though is these cameras, uh, for some technical reason, usually can't record more than 15 minutes in one video file. And if it does, what happens is just look on your camera because it cuts it off in another video file. And if you put both side by side when you're editing in, in iMovie, the, 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 the viewer doesn't even know. Yeah, that's what I recommend. Yeah. So kind of go after that. So do you, do you like record mm -hmm. like a long, long section and then decide I'm going to chop it up or do you do them each individually? I do. Well, so what, like, yeah. Like, how, how long is like one of your talks? Yeah, yeah. Do I do each lecture. So lectures can be up to 20 minutes. Udemy likes you to make them a minimum of one minute. I, I'm usually somewhere between three and 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so each file that I do, is one lecture. And I make sure to title it as well. And, and just like, you know how the, um, in the movies they go cut and all that stuff, whatever. I, I kind of do that myself just by verbally saying, you know, act one, uh, um, or sorry, uh, uh, section one, lesson one, introduction, take one, go. Yeah, yeah, and so each file is individualized on its own. Yeah, and it's, it's so much fun to edit too. Um, you know, I enjoy it. And, and if you want to do higher end stuff, then iMovie, you can move on to Final Cut Pro X, which is another amazing Apple product. It's great. But Saturday Night Live actually, uh, um, they record a lot of their videos using this camera, the exact same camera. It's amazing. And even Final Cut Pro is used to make professional movies that you and I have all seen, similar to iMovie. It's, it's a lot easier than you think, despite my mess up today. <laughs> yes. Um, how do you get. Sure. Um, how, do you, how do you find time to do this along with being a dad? Like, how do you get your kids yeah. out of the house or be quiet or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's initially I, I would record, I go on the night shift. And I would go on the, um, I would go on the night shift for a couple reasons. One is because the lights get so hot and I don't have air conditioning in my house. I put air conditioning in recently. Uh, and also because when my kids would, use the, uh, the bathroom, the sinks, toilets and stuff, uh, I would hear it in my house. So I would go on the night shift. So it's, it's, it kind of gets tiring, but you know, that's what I did. Awesome. Now I just do it during, uh, during the days when the kids are at school. Yeah, and in the summer, in the summer, in our, in our backyard, they know to stay away from this certain window uh, when I'm recording. They're cool about it. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. I actually put my kids in my, my video. I'm working on one now with one of my kids. Uh, he loves Clash of Clans. And it's a, it's a course on how to teach kids about business using Clash of Clans as a model. 
you know, yeah, it's neat. You know, save, saving money by getting gems. Oh my God, I'm gonna go off topic here, sorry. <laughs> saving money by getting gems, protecting money by creating walls. Apparently, I don't play the game much, right? Um, and then um, make money by creating uh, just those gold mine things. Awesome. So he says, yeah. <laughs> it's fun though, yeah. But it's, uh, no, it's gotta be, if, if it, if you enjoy doing it, it will really come through. Like you'll, you'll really, you'll be so passionate about it, it won't feel like work. Like sometimes I'll go to bed and I, I used to, when I used to work for other people, which I hated, uh, I'd, I'd wake up and, and I'd, I'd look at the alarm and I'd be like, oh, thank God I get to sleep in a little bit more. But now I, I, I wake up early and I was like, oh, thank God I can get up now and do this. Like I really enjoy it. Like it's fun, but it's gotta be fun. If it feels like work, don't do it. Don't do it. And, and everybody has something to, to, to teach. Uh, you'll find after you do your, your first course, that there are other skills that you have that you can teach as well. Or you can learn yourself and then teach other people, right? Because I humbly believe that when one teaches, two learn. Yeah, it's fun. Yes, hi. Um, when you recorded some of the earlier videos, uh -huh. did you feel like some of the videos, you felt like it was work for you doing them? I yeah, them, them. yeah, yeah, I, um, it, it did. And it, it's so obvious too. Like I look at some of the older footage of my, my earlier stuff, I was like, oh my God, that was, why, why did I even bother? Right, and I actually took down two courses in the past year that it just didn't feel like I, my heart was as into it as it should have been. And I told myself from then on, I'm never doing anything again uh, unless I think of my heart first, my head second. Yeah, yeah. But, but again, teach what you love, what you, what you enjoy. And, and it feels so good knowing you're helping people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, right. I have a question about framing. Sure. Uh -huh. I noticed when you were speaking and you had the video, your hands would pop up and not in and out of the frame. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, um, I, I usually have the clicker in one hand so that I can't move this hand. And I like to use this hand a bunch. But in the, in the yeah, I like to do it. Yeah, it's just my personal style. Um, you know, I, I actually made the camera a bit closer to me because I found sometimes I overdid it, right? And people were just, I, I was just focusing on my hands and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, but you'll get your own style too. And, and I love to use the picture in picture thing. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's, um, it's like a video game, like when you're editing. It's just, it's just fun. I just enjoy it. It's just cool. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Do you believe, so when you're doing your, your, um, your courses and you come to main points, do you have that in writing also, like a PowerPoint? Or yes. You so you do. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I, I script all, yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll, 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 I'll go off cuff uh, every now and then. But I, I script it so I can stay, you know, uh, on, on script. Totally on screen, then you end up behind the screen, or do you no, no, no. So what happens is the, the PowerPoint. So I've got this uh, this thing where I attach this screen, and it's a mirror. It looks like this, right? And you can see through the mirror. And then I have a screen here that shows PowerPoint in reverse. Yeah. And this little screen here is hooked up to my laptop, and I can click through, and I know what the next points are. Yeah. No, I am. And I can see right through the screen. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't degrade the, the quality at all because the way the mirror is structured is it looks like this. So if I stared right up at that mirror right now, it looked like a mirror. But if I look from over there into here, it doesn't look like a mirror. I can see right through it. It's awesome. And it, it's really cheap and easy to do. And send me an email and I'll, and I'll hook you up. Yeah. Yeah. I bought, I bought the equipment used on eBay. It's, it's, it's easy to do, yeah. And it also stops me from some of my bad habits. Like some of my students have complained that, I, and you probably heard me say this today, I say the word right and okay uh, a lot. And so if you kind of script it somewhat, you'll stay away from those bad habits. Yeah. Just one more yeah, so yeah the, sure. The yeah. equipment you're talking about, the screen, mm. it's, it's effectively like, a, is it like a teleprompter setup? It is. Okay. It is, yeah. But I kind of hacked it a bit okay. so that I could have the reverse uh, screen show up and, and I'll show you just see me afterwards and I'll, I'll actually um, I'll show you a demo. Okay. Yeah Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. On the audio. I noticed that when you made the two recordings mm -hmm. the audio was it changed Yeah, line. yeah, so how do you align them so that sure. you've got consistent volume? All sure, across? sure. I'll show you so what you can do is I kind of played around with the audio a bit more If I had more time editing I would do that, but I'll show you here uh, you see down here Can you turn the lights out? Sorry, thanks. Okay. You see down here how the audio levels are higher? Okay, let me, I'll actually go and use my finger here. Sorry. So the audio levels are higher here in the 
uh, in the screencast, and then they're lower here in mine. So you see that white line there? You just take that and drag it down a bit. It's that easy. And, and Apple is so awesome. They make it so intuitive. Okay, so you go here, and I dragged it. See there how I'm dragging it down? Right? So if you listen to this audio, Let's jump right in. and then if you go back to this one, see? It's lower. Yeah, the clapping was the, uh, the, 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 the bottom one. See, it's a little bit better, a little bit better. And you can, you can change it up that way too. Um, and the audio actually, it worked out well here, but at first, when you set up your audio, um, you're gonna have issues, it's not gonna be perfect. You might hear a bit of an echo, the volume won't be loud enough. And if you talk to Udemy, again, they have a great test video support group. They'll walk you through how to fix it so you can work smarter and not harder. And I have, have a course, I create a course every year. Uh, it's called 40, uh, tips on how to teach online and it's free it's on Udemy and it's based on 40 mistakes that I've made over the past year so you don't make the same mistakes that, that I've made um, and the course is live now you can check it out it's in 10 languages and I'll have the follow-up called another 40 tips uh, live in a couple weeks as well uh, and you know what I'll do actually I'll put in the, the, the teleprompter part as well and, and I'll, I'll detail that as well and if there's other sections that you want me to add, just send me an email, I'll put it in. Yeah. So, uh, what's that? Oh, so, so what you can do is you can add, um, you can add closed, closed captions, which I do for most of my courses. And the way you do it is you go to a website called rev.com. And at rev, rev.com. And you upload, although Udemy does have auto captioning now in English, and they're adding international languages auto as well. But what I've done in the past is I go to rev.com and I upload all my Udemy video files. And then they create captions. I download those, those caption files. They're called VTTs. It's about the size of a text file. And then I'll upload it to Udemy. When you upload your videos like I showed you, you can also upload a little text file. And those are caption files. Okay, and then the yeah. Website, I mean, I think puts it together. Yes. They, yeah, they make it really, really intuitive. And then you can do that in foreign languages too. Yeah, it's fun too. Like, yeah. I messed up big. I made so many mistakes. Like I did, I did a course in Hindi, which was a disaster because in Hindi, all the writing you have, it, they're all, it, there's a, it's like a T connected at the top. I thought that was a mistake and I spaced out each letter. And so, and then, yeah, they were so polite and nice about it though. But yeah, yeah. So I've, I've made every mistake there is to make. Yes. Can you estimate Sorry. sort of the uh, investment for startup equipment? Assuming you have a camera. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, you can get a, a, a DSLR camera like this for, um, you get a couple hundred bucks. Like Costco's got good kits. No, they do. Like the, the, the T2 Rebel. Yeah. And I think it's like four or 500. I, I can't remember, but you can get a kit uh, and, and you can record HD. Use what you have first though. Uh, and I have tons of different equipment here I can show you that I used in the past. So let's say 500. Uh, laptop, you probably already have. If not, you could just throw that cost in. iMovie is free. PowerPoint on Windows is, is well, you already own it probably. Uh, QuickTime's included for free here. And then when it comes to the Blue Yeti, I think Blue Yeti's about 150 bucks or so. And then the stands, you can get them for 10, 20 bucks each. Uh, and this thing can be 60 bucks. Um, and the lights are about 200 bucks, so we can just kind of add all that up together. But again, use what you have first. Yeah, and just send me a message if you've got questions. I, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to, to help out. Yeah, everyone's going like this in the back, but I'm ignoring them. Okay, I'll take 10 more questions. I'm just, I'm kidding, okay, 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 thanks. One more, one more. Thanks. Yeah, so if a really echoey room, what you can do is a couple of things. So you know when you go house shopping or apartment shopping, whatever, how you start talking and you hear echoes? It's because there's no furniture in the room. So you put a couch in the room, move your furniture around a little bit, or what you can do is you could put a blanket up on the wall, which I've done. And I actually created a brand new studio at my house uh, over the past two months. And I'll actually put that into the, the latest course and show you how I did it. But I actually bought uh, moving blankets. Let me show you right here. Sorry, DQ, give me a second, bud. Okay. So here's some, some equipment here. And this is, a, this is a, a moving blanket here, see? And you put this in. And don't do black, otherwise it'll get too hot. But it's a moving blanket. These are like 20 bucks for a pack of two over Amazon. And you just hammer them into the wall. My, my wife was mad because I covered up the crown molding with nails. Um, but before I forget, one last thing, sorry. I know, I know, I'll, I'll stop. 
this here is, is what I use for my teleprompter. So I bought this used on, on eBay. Don't buy it brand new. But I, I kind of hacked it together. It's really easy to do. And this is what you use if you have a car and you want to put in uh, your, your, your own dash on it. So anyway, it looks like this here. See this? And so you, you buy the glass, the two-way mirror. You put this here. It attaches to HDMI directly to your laptop, kind of like I connected it to here. You go to PowerPoint and you reverse the font so it's backwards and you just click through. That's it, yeah. And so if you want to take a look at this, um, I'll, I'll leave it up here and uh, you, you can look if you want. It's pretty easy to hack. Again, I bought this used on, on eBay and I got a bunch of other equipment here. I'm so sorry I keep going on and on. I'll, I'll, I'll talk forever. I, I love this stuff. So thank you for your time. I, I appreciate it. Thanks, that's, that's nice. Sure, thank you. Thanks.